Hello. I don't know if you're familiar with the nucleus in Maya. It hasn't been around for ages, it's, so it's a pretty modern module here. And uh, it comes with all the new things you can do with dynamic systems. N cloth, that's nucleus cloth, N particles, etc. Uh, so when everything is under the hood of one single nucleus, the, the objects will all behave according to the dynamic properties of that nucleus. And we'll try this out now by asking the question, can two or three particle systems, n-particle systems, so to say, collide with each other. Well, let's start. Let's go to fx here, and under n-particles we find create emitter. That's the straightforward way to create something which emits something. I move the emitter slightly to the left, and it, it emits particles in all directions. This is the emitter of the past. That's the legacy part. That's the emitter of the past. It needs gravity as an extra input in order to function properly with dynamic systems. It currently is uh, only evaporating from a cent central point to all other directions. So don't confuse this with that one. That's the one we're after, really. And when we... Um, start the simulation here you see the difference between the two of them so in order to get a clean start let's create a new scene and particles create emitter from this section and not from that section core emitter and we move it up there and to the left it emits particles which fall down now let's change the properties just a little bit go to shading and instead of points we pick spheres and a little bit further down you see the color and we change the color from white to yellow so we have yellow particles falling down further up you have the particle size the radius for example and we stick to that radius and the collisions tell us they do collide if there's something else in the scene which is n dynamic which works in collaboration with that nucleus here, uh, the particles will collide. They can also self-collide. And uh, let me show you how this behaves. You see, they when they spread out, they're very close to each other and they need to get away from each other. That's why this makes quite a difference here. We don't need the self-collision right now because they're spreading nicely anyway. Um, but we'll introduce something which disturbs them massively now and particles create emitter we move the emitter right here and now um, with this particle shape selected we can go down to the shading section again which is here we change this to spheres we let me run the simulation just a little bit and I want to change the color here to a red or an orange, like this. So um, next thing I want to do is I want to shoot the particles from the right to the left. And I just want to change the particle size a little bit, make them bigger. 0 0.3, you can see them bigger now. Uh, collisions, they do collide and I want them to self-collide. Now where is the direction? Um, you have dynamic properties and the dynamic properties have interesting uh, parameters here. Ignore the solver gravity. When I turn this on, this particle system, the orange one, won't fall down according to the nucleus. The nucleus tells us to f fall down. So they don't fall down, instead they kind of spread here in the middle. And we can use a local force which goes to the left, minus 1 in x. Actually, if we type in minus 3, does it go f uh, faster? Not really. And now you see the particles interact. You see, before we introduced the orange ones, the yellow ones just fell down straight. 
and now they are massively distort, uh, distorted in their motion and the orange particles as well because there are particles down here all of a sudden because they are, uh, 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 get impulse um, that means motion um, vectors from the orange ones Bye-bye.